Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. And for our women with breast cancer, survivors with hot flashes, this is a most difficult topic. Very difficult to manage hot flashes. So with us today to help you navigate through what is out there is Dr. Andy Kaunitz. Welcome, Andy. Andy Thanks, is with Marla. the University of Florida Research Foundation. He's a professor and an associate chair in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology in the University of Florida College of Medicine, Jacksonville. So for women who have breast cancer, dealing with the fear of breast cancer, now thrown into menopause, terrible hot flashes, what can we tell them? Um, the good news is um, uh, our patients uh, who've been treated for breast cancer and now are, are suffering from bothersome hot flashes, perhaps sleep deprivation, perhaps with the impact on mood. Um, we have more options and more information than ever um, for this um, patient population. So if you're a woman with breast cancer, generally you will be told no menopausal hormonal therapy, period, punctuation, bold letters. Right. We, we don't know that, that taking, for instance, a hormone tablet or patch is dangerous and will increase recurrence in, in breast cancer survivors. Um, but we also don't know it's safe. And so um, the regulatory authorities, FDA, for instance, um, in the US, regulatory authorities in Canada, uh, as you said, Marla, um, it's just, uh, you're not supposed to use hormone therapy full stop. Okay, so if you're a woman with hot flashes, often being a breast cancer patient, you may go to natural alternatives. So a word about safety for the women who are listening. Okay, so um, uh, we, we have a number of um, supplements that women can purchase over the counter. In terms of effectiveness, I wish I could say that soy and isoflavones, red, red um, clover, black cohosh was more effective um, than no treatment. Unfortunately, um, the, the data does not suggest that these, these supplements are um, effective in treating hot flashes. I wish they were. Um, and then in terms of safety, some of these agents, particularly like soy, isoflavones, we don't, we're not totally sure how they might impact certain women with a uh, history of breast cancer. And because they're not effective and we don't know as much about the safety as we'd like to, I, I just can't recommend these supplements in my patients with breast cancer and hot flashes. Okay, so lifestyle. We always speak to lifestyle. Yes. What lifestyle tips can we offer? Well, well there, there are important ones. Um, um, so, some are very simple. Um, like it's sort of like my, uh, I'll hear, well, my husband, um, he's, he turns the electric blanket up and uh, I, I don't want the blanket at all. Um, um, loose fitting um, um, of sleep garments that, that, that uh, may be in layers. And so if, if, if uh, women get hotter, start sweating at night, they can, they can um, uh, reduce the number of layers. Uh, avoiding um, uh, hot beverages, um, avoiding alcohol, which often can trigger hot flashes. Um, these uh, more exercise, which is helpful in reducing hot flashes. These are all non-medication approaches, lifestyle choices uh, that can help at least at least some women with bothersome symptoms. And in terms of prescriptions, so for a woman with breast cancer who really is not doing well with the lifestyle management, with the exercise, doing everything right, what can she be offered? Well, the good news is. Uh, we now have much more information and more um, products available for uh, non-hormonal products available for such women, but these are prescription medications um, that uh, our patients might be familiar with because they're also used as antidepressants. But Marla, we are not talking about treating depression here. We're talking about women uh, without any mental health concerns, but with major hot flash concerns. Um, and uh, for instance, one agent is called um, paroxetine or Paxil. Uh, in the U.S., there's a specific ultra-low dose formulation that's approved and marketed to treat hot flashes, and I'm certainly using that in some of my patients in Florida. Um, there's a, a similar formulation of paroxetine available in Canada. And then a second antidepressant known as venlafoxine or Effexor uh, certainly is also more effective um, than no treatment. Um, uh, but one, one caveat, one word of caution, for uh, women uh, with a history of breast cancer who are now taking a course of tamoxifen, um, those women should not use um, paroxetine, but they can safely use venlafoxine or Effexor. Um, so clearly we have more effective non-hormone options 
for women who've been treated for breast cancer and, and have bothersome menopausal symptoms, more options and more information than we used to have. That's good news. That is good news for our patients. And as always, the best place to get their information? Well, um, talk to your physician um, or, or healthcare provider and, and, and seek out healthcare providers who have special expertise in menopause. Um, if you have a North American Menopause Society credentialed um, physician or clinician in your area, or you, you go to the menopause.org website to find such a clinician, um, that might be a good starting point for women who are facing these challenging issues. Thank you, Andy.